Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, sir, of the 2020 podcast, LLC. Please say the LLC. And uh, today is another episode of Squad Goes. This episode will be our season finale. It's been a long time coming, but God damn it, we tired. We need a break. You know what I'm saying? Even <laughs> Desperate Housewives got to take a little bit of a time off. Her love and hip hop, power, shit. And power take two breaks, I think. So shit, I feel like we deserve one. But um, we got... Goddamn, the whole family in here. Look, we got Controversial Chronicles. We got uh, Jared, a.k.a. Life the Poet, in the building. We got Adolescents Adults in the building. We got Black on Black Rhyme in the building. And we we, just, yeah. we got everybody. We got everybody. Goddamn it, everybody here. It's a family reunion. Family affair. So that being said, today's episode is going to be a controversial topic. So if you are easily offended... I suggest we holler at you in 2021 because uh, tonight ain't going to be your episode. Tonight we are discussing abstinence. Is it feasible? Is it realistic to want to remain abstinent until marriage nowadays? Now I'm going to go first because this was a topic that was actually brought to me in a general conversation between myself and a few of my boys. And I'm going to be honest with you. I can't do it. I just, I, I don't see it being a thing, bro. With what I expect sexually, I just can't go blind into a marriage with just your word that you're good at what you say you are. You know what I'm saying? I feel like conversation only goes so far. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you can lie and hype your head game up, but then we get down to the nitty gritty and you using teeth. You know what I'm saying? Not knocking everybody who use teeth. But that just ain't me. Not my kink. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Shout out wall, to... Uh, I feel like sandpaper. You got problems. Kind of, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like sloppy, sloppy tip. That's what that is. Just slap it all together. It's a wrap. It's sharp tip. That's what it is. It's going to turn your shit into a sharpie when you do. Um, remember the old pencil sharpies say? you had to stick your shit in and they go round and round? That's what I... Yeah. <laughs> But um, I just wanted to to offer it to y'all, man. Um, I'm going to... Typically, I start with my ladies. But this time, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to start with my guys. And uh, I'm going to start with my brother from another mother, one of my podcast cousins, Mr. Sir Rude himself. Bro, tell me what are your thoughts? All right. Well, uh, first of all, I appreciate y'all having the boy on here. Um, I'm going to be real with you. I think that if you've had sex before, there is no point in you being abstinent. Now, if you ain't never had no sex and you want to be abstinent for whatever reason, go for it. But all I know is I can't walk into a car dealership and buy a car and I ain't never test drove that bit. Um, point blank, period. And just to be real, it's like, what purpose does it serve? Because if I wait until we have sex and your sex is trash or I find out that I'm very good at this, mm -hmm. I'm going to want to do it with somebody else. So now we got to either get a like divorce or I need another girl or so we got to do something. Like why we why take yourself through all of that? Y'all be sin every damn day. Go ahead, smash once and be like, "Okay, cool. We can do this." And then maybe hold out if you want to. But you got to test drive the car, fam. Hey, Cuff, I told y'all what it is. Mm -hmm. Get in where you fit in. Y'all go on. Hell. I was going to say, um, less on the, like, I need to test drive side, more on the, are you mature enough side? Because I feel like that with sex comes emotional maturity and emotional development that you don't get prior to having sex. Like, how do you know what a good sex partner is if you've never had sex before? Like, that discernment that comes from having sex you don't have that sense of discernment when you're a virgin you'll just have sex with anybody that says they love you or anybody that shows you attention it takes time for you to realize like oh this dude's literally only paying me attention because he want to have sex not because there's a deeper connection or oh this nigga dick is small like damn that it really is different sizes out here let me skip over this motherfucker and go to his friend because that nigga packing like gray sweatpants oh, and like but you have to learn that though by having sex like and i don't really see the, okay i'm not gonna um sorry i don't know why i did that <clears throat> i feel like if you're 21 plus and you're holding out for marriage good luck because without that sense of discernment 
99.9% of the time, the first person you have sex with is going to be the wrong person. And you're going to end up divorced. So, okay, I, like, I know everyone's kind of chiming in, but, like, what, I guess, why would you wait until marriage? What would be the point other than the Christian Bible said the wait until marriage? Like, what would be the point in, in abstinence anyway? To avoid now, the, what now I would say, now I would say the wait would be because of what you see on the internet, you know, you mm -hmm. see how these people running through each other and stuff mm -hmm. like that. A lot of people might want to hold out because they don't want to get dead dirty, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying you got to be a hoe, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can still be able to choose who you sleep with, but like, it's a point of I feel like everybody's grown and, and like you said unless unless everybody like if that person is like a virgin and they're like really set on not having sex until they're they're married you know respect that and, and move on if that's what you can do you know then you know more power to you like you said Jeremy uh, that's not me but uh, if if you can be able to say hey um, hey okay like. I'm not saying go down with the homies and everything like that. Like I'm not, but just you know, be you still be mindful of it. Is I think everybody thinks of it sometimes like that older generation thinks of it as black and white, where it's either you're abstinent or you're a hoe, and, mm -hmm. and there's there's a lot of gray area in there. You know what I'm saying? There's so Fifty Shades of Gray. So uh, so as far as that's concerned, man, like I feel like you know just kind of getting rid of that uh, whole stigmatism of of you either being a, a saint or a sinner. I mean, there's, there's room in there. I agree with that. I just want to address the question that was asked of why be abstinent. Let me first just say, I have respect for anyone who chooses to live that lifestyle. Uh, it's not one that I would choose. However, I can, I can see both sides of it. I think the question, to answer the question as to why someone would want to be celibate, I think the first reason that comes to my mind would be a religious reason and maybe certain religious teachings that have been taught to that part, to that individual. Um, it could also be a personal decision. Um, I have had things that, although they were not virgins, they started to realize a pattern in their dating life. And so they chose to remain abstinent and they did so for quite some time because they just felt that at some point the focus wasn't on, Hey, do I actually like this person? Like, what do I think about you, your character, your integrity? It was so less focused and focused on passion and passionate is essential to a relationship, but you can't, thrive in a relationship strictly based on passion. So I agree with um, the last point that the, the gentleman made about having a healthy balance. And I think some people don't understand that there's a gray area if you do choose to have sex before you, you're married. And I think with that, each individual has to determine what does a healthy sex life look like for me because that may be different for me that may be different for you and then i think another question that you need to ask yourself if you're choosing to abstain okay what what am i really trying to prove to myself and then if you do choose to have sex you need to ask yourself why am i having sex so because there's different layers to sexual intimacy so those are my thoughts on the I first part of our conversation I was going to ask you, um, was the person who decided to take a pause for him, were, were they virgins prior to, or no. had... No, 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 they weren't. They, neither one of them were virgins. Um, okay. They just, uh, definitely not virgins. They just started seeing certain patterns within their dating life, and they just chose to just... Wouldn't that be celibacy? Because I feel like abstaining True. never True. done. So, right, Vir so yeah. Yeah, I that's mean, that's very true. Just to spe specify, like that was just them abstaining from sex, but uh, not okay. being abstinent from marriage. So let me just go back and clarify that. So thank you for asking that. I mean, okay. for our purposes of our conversation, celibacy and abstinence 
is practically like I know they're different by definition, but for our purposes, we basically treat them the same. Ain't okay. it? Okay, they are the same. There's no difference to it. <laughs> Well, it's either I, you having sex or you're not having sex. It's, well, I was going to say, I just, I feel like there is a difference only because most people that talk about abstinence are talking about virgins versus celibacy where you, um, you might have pieces of that emotional development that I was talking about that you got from having sex, but you still might need to take a pause in order to get soul searching or some energy clearing or whatever it may be that you need to do in order to get back to the space where you want to have sex but most people that are abstinent are not even in the space of like ever doing sex they don't have a lot of experience they're just not experienced in general but with to work. be fair but to right. be fair according to the internet and google knows all abstinence and, and celibacy are the same it has nothing to do with whether you're a virgin it's simply oh, just abstaining yeah, I never, sex. thank you yeah. for that but you, we, yeah, but you want to know about you want to know you want to know one thing about abstinence? Like, I, what I think about people with abstinence is, is this like, it's like once you really know what soul ties are, because that's the quickest way to get them. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, once you, once if you know what a soul tie is, without even tr having sex, you're going to be like, no, no. Because mm -hmm. see, as an emotional person, that there kinds to, that, you know what I'm saying? If you are really emotional, you are that's gonna be a red flag within itself. That's gonna be the last thing you think about. The last thing you think about is sex. Like it it will take a, a strong emotional connection for you to have sex. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like with celibacy, like people decide to be celibacy, I mean celibate because they've had that soul tie. They know exactly what it feels like and they don't wanna deal with it. That's something that you just don't want to deal with because once you create that soul tie and you guys are not married and everything is toxic and you know what I'm saying, it's just it's a lot to deal with because it it makes you know what I'm saying, like sex makes folks crazy. It really do. It makes folks crazy. Like I'm talking about on some I'm gonna come sm slash the tires and Bushing windows out your car, type crazy, and it's just like. Oh, yeah, you know, I seen that lady that blew up that jeep, or try to set that jeep on fire and blew herself. It's, up. It's, that shit was hilarious. Exactly, like you know what I'm saying. And I feel like that's the reason why people decide to do that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like it's not so much of I don't want to, I I can't do it because because I can't live without sex. It's, you no, know, I don't want to deal with what comes with it after we have sex. The sex right. ain't got nothing to do with it. The right. And just to take it back, I think that's the point. Not that it was, it wasn't a situation where uh, it was making them crazy or anything like that, but they were seeing patterns of, again, the after effects of it. And I think a lot of times when we enter into a physical act, which is sex, people forget about the emotional ramifications of it. And the two really are intertwined. Even if, you know, you try to separate it as much as you want, it still has some sort of effect. But all in all, all that being said, everything that we have said so far makes it sound like it is much better to have sex before <laughs> waiting to get to marriage, because how would you know any of this? You don't, you know. That's bad the man. Somewhere. I mean, no, I agree <laughs> with that. Oh, I yeah. don't think a, a, a man or a female thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm very balanced. I'm, I have a, just as much masculinity as I do femininity. So maybe that's why I feel the way that I do. Known from, I just have noticed from sitting around other women who choose to be abstinent in, uh, based off of the definition that I grew up on, which would be like a virgin, even though we've just clarified. But the women that I found that tend to be virgins are very emotionally unstable almost as emotionally unstable as the chick who's fucking a dude that she don't need to be fucking like to the point where she's all up in arms because a dude didn't text her right back oh he must be talking to somebody else he might be having sex with someone else oh my and it's like well <laughs> like your issues might be a lot deeper than sex one <laughs> and two 
like there is just a level of maturity that is missing there like the conversation stops at a certain point and i feel like it's i tend to notice that it's very hard for people to connect with uh, virgins to connect with people who aren't virgins because the conversation the maturity level of the conversation stops at a certain point like everything is based off of when we get married and it's just like i don't even know if i'm there with you yet you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. let me get there for you're already like trying to move me to marriage so we can have sex like i just went to a wedding this past weekend where the bride and the groom got engaged in july and were married by october hold on this is not even the kicker were they black yes they were <laughs> yes they were the kicker was that she then this is what i'm talking about that virgin like they they be a little crazy sometimes sweet as pie but she announces to the whole entire wedding wedding uh, party and guests that she saved her 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 whole entire virginity for him she's been waiting for this moment her whole life and she is ready to give it up and i was just sitting there like Bitch, did she really just say that like in front of aunties and grannies and like <laughs> and the lord the babies like for, oh, they were, they were oh, probably like good job girl we so proud of you 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 <laughs> bend it over for him girl bend it over. Well, i think I think one thing that needs to be addressed is unfortunately for women there's a lot of value placed on yeah. virginity and mm -hmm. that being tied to your value as a woman as a wife and 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 i'm not saying everyone let me just clarify that but i think just to go back to this wedding that you attended and why she was so proud of that and so my question to her is so let's just say you weren't a virgin does that make you less worthy of a loving healthy relationship like it, you know that doesn't it doesn't mean any of that and so i think just oftentimes in religious practices and i'm not anti-religion by any means but uh, i just think that there's so much value placed and it can leave certain people with shame when they do choose to have sex even with their husband and i just think that's unhealthy especially going into a new marriage uh, men yeah. don't men don't want a virgin. They just don't want a hoe. Um, it's it's a uh, there's a difference between the two. Like I said, it's it's that uh that whole black and white thing. Like we like we understand that you gonna have you gonna have a life before us, but like it's just that we don't want you to be like you. We don't want you to belong to the streets for the most part. We just want you to be able to to really be able to, you know, okay, like she had this boyfriend in high school, you know, she got with this guy here, you know what I mean? Just like, just like y'all women don't want us to ha be man hoes. And then after that, you'd be like, oh, okay, well, he got with, you know, this girl here, that girl there. It's just, uh, you know, a moderation. So I yeah. don't want you to think that, uh, you know, we, we look for virgins, because then, like you said, you got to deal with that crazy, and you don't know what that crazy looks like, you know, as far as that's concerned. Um, like personal example like i dated somebody who was a virgin she was like 28 27 and that was a box of, of crazy i wasn't ready for so uh so like it, it's one of those things where like like you said it, it's a it's a moderation it's a just a, a finding the middle happy ground i think, well, I I think man, you just oh I yes think, I, I, I think i think people just really want to know if if we can match up or not you know not as much not so much as even being a hoe or being a virgin like some some people have ceilings sexually like and it's, it's it's two or three people three reasons people get divorced and stuff like that is money and it's sex you know what i mean that's 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 up there in the top five so you know a lot of people want to have sex before marriage because they want to know how low your ceiling is you know me personally, I have a high sex drive. I'm into trying all this kind of new stuff. You know, I'm in I'm into trying all these new things. So if I wait to marry you to only to find out, you know, hitting it from the back is extravagant for you, we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> like like so <laughs> just like just like bro said, you know, you gotta test drive it before you pull it off the lot. And that's only because if I wait, you know, oh uh, man, you know, after we get married, baby, it's on. And after we get married, you're like, you know, I, I ain't signed up for all that. You know, that a lot of people want to go ahead and make sure 
we even compatible in that aspect. Like, cause em emotionally, mentally, you know, all of that, it'll be there because uh, without sex, we spent all this time getting to know each other, the ins and outs, you know, all our flaws and this and that. But once it comes to the peak of it, which is that intimacy, and that's putting all of our energy, all this love we done accumulated, putting that together, becoming one in that moment in soul time, like we've been talking about. And and you turn around and say, Oh yeah, I don't get no head. I ain't I ain't go, I can't dig that. You can't tell I I'm not finna be beat and waited to put a ring on you and say, you know, you tell me, oh I want to wait to marriage. Oh I want to wait to marriage. And you and you just and you just weak. I just, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> that slob on the knob, huh? I, you got to. Two hand twist combination. I got to have that. Yeah, I, just, the I, I, I can't I can't wait. I can't wait. You know, oh, we've been together five years. We gonna wait to marry only to find out you a dud. You know, we got a we got a match. We got a dud, a milk dud straight out of the yellow box. Look, okay. we, look, we got a <laughs> We got to match. I got <laughs> I got to know that we match first before we can even talk about 10 15 years of marriage because I got to know that I'm going to stay satisfied. Things are going to stay fresh because we're going to keep trying new things. You know what I mean? Right. So right, right. I, I, I as far as abstinence, I couldn't do it because I have to know if we both going to keep growing sexually together and that you going to match my you going to match me. Celibacy, celibacy you know, that's that's cool. You know, I like what Kay said about that. Um, celibacy, that's cool. Unless you're trying to be celibate with somebody you already had sex with. That I've uh, That's one thing that you've had sex before, you know, and then, you know, you get with me and decide, hey, you know, I want to be celibate, whatever. I, I ain't never had none of it, so I can't get mad at you for not wanting to give it to me. Because you said, all right, I'm going to be celibate. I've never had none of it, so I can't get mad at you. Mm -hmm. But if you done gave it to me, and then you say, hey, you know what, Jared? You know, I know we'd have had sex before, but I I just I just want to wait. Just throw the whole girl away, okay? Nick, you done, you uh, feel me? Oh, let, let me tell you all this real quick. You done already put it in my hand. Let, well, let, uh, let me, let me tell you. I, I want to tell you all this one quick story. And, uh, okay, oh, wow. so this is embarrassing, but... I but you finna tell it. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm, I've already <laughs> drank some. This is... <laughs> so, uh, that whole situation that you just described uh, happened to me, and it was with uh, my son's mom. I'm like, we done had a whole effing kid together, and we was like, oh, oh. <laughs> then we wanted to try it's to. It's too late to turn back oh, now. No. <laughs> No, nope, even sir. Now nah, I'm a. Mm, I'm gonna fuck it. I'm gonna tell the whole rush too. So, so then afterwards, it was just like, uh, oh well, we're gonna wait until we got married, and then we got married, and then it didn't really work out anyway. So we waited for no reason. So the shit was, shit was all fucked up. That's um, my point. That's my point. Yeah, I'm so, not gonna wait for nothing. Man, I was. I that's a part of I think with celibacy <laughs> that I don't like because I feel like it's like. If you've Control. had sex, if we've had sex, like it's a it's a form of sometimes manipulation. Like women mm. try to be able to hold on to like, oh well, I'm gonna make him wait or I'm gonna make him do this. But you know, y'all expect us to pay for for dinners right away. Mm -hmm. Y'all expect us to do all these you know husbandly things already, but y'all not ready to to do that part of it. So I feel like like you hey, like Jared was saying was first like. Your freak got your freak got to match my freak so that we know what we're on. But we also have to be we have to be honest with ourselves about how freaky we are, and then also we got to be honest with ourselves about like we both living in sin. So don't act like you know what you're doing is any better than what we're doing right now. So right. So I feel compelled to put this disclaimer out here before I say this. There's anybody that's a member of my family or anybody that's close to me that don't want to hear this, you might want to go ahead and click off now. That's your warning. That's it. Okay, so back to the message. <laughs> uh, I just want y'all to stop thinking that it's just females that be holding out because I done dated dudes that have held out on me and I'm looking like, bruh, uh, what you got going on? Uh, <laughs> I like you, but I don't like you that much just not yeah. to figure out what you got going on. We done dated for over six months. 
I still ain't had none. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you like. I don't know what size you is. I don't, you know what I'm saying? You ain't touched me for oh, real. For real. Like, I'm I just saying, made. six months, I can't, no. I can't. I be trying I to do the little past, uh, day long. Uh, I can't even months. do that. She do no. have a I definitely have been with a dude before who just all of a sudden stopped having sex, but then also yes! so that was that. I feel like guys who do that, I feel like they got somebody else or you they just know yes! I feel that like, too. I mean, I feel like that's what it is. Like for me, um, I'm like the guys. I mean, I'm always getting put in the categories of having a man mind because I don't okay. like to waste my time. I don't like if I, I need to have sex and I need to know what you are, I need to know your size, what you like, what you mm-hmm. don't like. And what you're mm-hmm. gonna put it down with your tongue. Like, I, I got stuff. Oh, and if I it ain't right, I'm one of those people that'll laugh at your ass. Like, bro, what are you doing? Like, I'm ruthless, <laughs> okay? I don't have my time because I don't get a box to everybody. So if I'm okay. gonna get my box up, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be coming with it. Period. Literally, pun intended. <laughs> and people always, you know, guys get, you know, they try to get biggity after they have sex with you, sir. Wait a minute. You only lasted 20 minutes. Not okay. even that. 20? Maybe five. You know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just talking about the Bring it down a little bit. And see, that's the ego thing for guys. It was you know, excited. They it was, you know, it was like, the hot dog in the hallway. Like, in the first you put a hot dog in the microwave on 30 seconds to watch what happened. No. And then, and then this is the thing. This the, this the thing, y'all. What they say? <laughs> oh, that's the free thing. That's how I had to do that to get it out. What? Uh, that's not a whole dude away. Okay? So, <laughs> I'm just... I'm one of those people, I don't waste time, like, for me, I didn't had all, you know, I had my fun in college, so if I'm, you know, we doing a do now, it's like, okay, I, you fucking auditioning right at this point, okay, you know, I gotta be satisfied, to, to, to you know, the, who gonna be the last dude, and okay. my husband, do we gotta write your name you know in now. but, I mean, it's just, Take some walls, <laughs> bro. you know, so for me, it was, it eventually stopped being about sex, it was like, okay, you need to put my mind, because that's going to heighten our sex sense. You know what I'm saying? If we ain't going to be, you know, because when you fucking somebody and they can mentally talk to you and they mentally fucking with your mind, like, that shit is, you're going to already be on the clouds. We already up there. You might as well just keep going. You know, so. But that's all my thing. I just want you to know that a girl feels just like y'all guys. Like, thank you. <laughs> hey, real talk. I got to jump in right here. Jump in. Jump back. It's plenty of women who brag about they box. Mm. And that shit is trash. Then not really Don't do it to him. <laughs> Bruh, Don't do it. <laughs> it's plenty of times I done had sex with women who like, uh-uh, we got to fuck doggy style. That's the only way I like it because I'm going to throw it back and they rhythm is terrible. Uh, <sighs> do y'all hear the music when you doing it though? Like when you hitting it from the back because I hear the music, I hear like the beat, Bruh. the two and the folks, you know, white Bruh. folks on one and three. You, you got to meet. So I be like hearing two, four, I be like, Look, oh, he on the wrong listen, beat. Listen, listen. If I gotta, if I got to grab your hips to do what we got to do, it's trash. Your your, your rhythm's off. You need to go do some hula hoop practice or something. <laughs> it's plenty. I like to put my hands behind my back and see you work a little bit. They feel you compatible. Get the moving. Right. You feel it, me? If I throw it back and you gotta, you ain't holding on tight enough. Look, you know look, what I'm saying? That's like, what Jared was talking about. Look, he said y'all ain't compatible. <laughs> you need to be looking you know back at it. Need to be over your shoulder, looking back at it, looking back at it and me, back you gotta and tell forth, the art back theory. and forth in order. Look, we, that's a whole nother chapter. Uh-uh. We'll get to that <laughs> in a minute. We'll do that. The arch game <laughs> is is advanced level shit. But I'm just saying, like on some real <laughs> shit. I, I know we talk one. about niggas who hype up shit too much. I've run into plenty of women who say, for instance, I um I think the term that I learned uh, through the Safe Word podcast, shout out to the Safe Word, is called oral fixation. Uh, I have a fetish for giving oral. And so if you tell me you can take it and you're not a runner, don't fucking run when I tell you I'm about to do my shit because then I'm turned off. If you can't take it, if you over here nothing real quick and all I did was write my first name, I... <laughs> And not even in cursive. Not even, even in cursive. cursive. <laughs> Why? Not even in Why? cursive, bro. bro. They, um, they can't handle that. <laughs> they, they're not even ready for the ice or the peppermint. Let's not go oh, about the ice or the peppermint, though. Bro. Oh, the dreams. Bro. I think I know we're going to be doing that. Bro. It's, it's, so yeah. it's, it's equally bad Speak on both sides. for yourself. I'm celibate. Mm-hmm. Get off. <laughs> but, but in all seriousness. Um, I just said I, it all kind of bitches. Yeah, everybody and everybody everybody just you know sometimes you just in the different stuff 
Some chicks like to get choked, some don't. Some yes. like to some like to have pull, some I don't. don't. So if I got to wait, so if I got to wait, if I got to wait until we married only to find out you don't like if I grab that head, we got a problem. Yeah. She might not know though. She might not know what she like. You got to, you got to go ahead and test that, break her in. Okay. You say you hey, don't, that, you got to cool. off the light. You got to That's, that's cool. But what a little, what up during the test drive, the thing break down on. That means she ain't with that. <laughs> 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 You supposed to be driving an automatic and the stick just start jerking. Just don't know what to do. <laughs> you think you got a Tesla, but you got a Toyota. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> but um, I, I will hey. say this. There are you people. You could get a discount, though. Just saying. Discount. But um, I will say this. Uh, a lot of us are in a safe group and i'm just going to expose this a little bit right here and uh -oh. uh, one of the bro one of the brothers there admitted that he was in a marriage where he's just not finding out that his wife does not like giving oral and he was asking the guys what should he do you know what i'm saying does he say something does he keep it to himself and Wait, pause jeremy how long have they been married uh, he, I think he's. Did he say the brothers were in the group? Y'all know what I'm talking about because I think y'all. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know. You're I think about. it was like five years. Like, like five he had been. Years? He, five? he like yeah, brother had been trying to like work it out. Like he he said like, listen, I've been I've been. It was a plea, bro. Like it was like, listen, yeah, was like I don't that know what to do. Funny. He's like, I don't want to cheat. He's like, my my wife's sex drive is not there. She don't like giving head. She don't like doing this. He's like, but you know, she's and he's even like, trying though. She, to she, say, that's the thing though. She, like, it was no, like, the way that it was described. So she was, takes and not gives. When, no, she doesn't re really even, she's not even into it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's, it's like she, she just laid it like silly. Ooh, I hate dead fish. <laughs> dead fish lays are the worst. Like plank, dead, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over here looking like Patrick and plank. shit. <laughs> My bad, my bad, Jeremy. I took this on a whole nother way. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just had to ask just so I could wrap my head around the story. It, it, so. it was it was a conversation where he was just like, I just don't know what to do. He's like, he was asking, you know, what he should do, like options. And, and like folks was trying to talk to her about uh, about what he needed to do, how he needed to talk to her, maybe what needs to be said, you know, but it's a lot of those kind of situations. I think people's freak don't match the other person's freak. And that's the thing. Like you shouldn't stop trying to get like the good, like church girl. That's like a holier than thou. And just hmm. get the girl that, that you just like, that just is your level. You know what I'm saying? Not but they say, say the church girl is the biggest freak though. I just want to say that. A, there's some of them that are. There, they say some, that. I just said what they say. Some some of them. Men are. I definitely think it's the church men. But then there's, oh, some, definitely. <laughs> there's some that are just like I was watching uh I was watching a podcast and they talked about like different positions and they were talking about how there's certain people that only do missionary positions because that's the only Christian position uh -huh. to do. Uh -huh. what? So I didn't know those existed. Mm -hmm. you, that's that that's why it's called that. missionary no, position. Because every other position, that. yeah, every other position is like dogs. Like everything like that, like they they're supposedly not, you know, good positions. Like they're not supposed to be. They're not Christian or holy positions. That's what I talked about. But the to the post though, like like I said in the comments on that post, they that's something they should have talked about before they got married. Like if she if she was if she wasn't giving them no head before they got married, he, he shouldn't have expected it after they got that married. Is. Like that's what I'm saying. That's why. You know, don't introduce the energy you can't maintain. Like if he, I, if she was giving, if she was giving them head before they got married, and then all of a sudden after they got married, she was like, "We're gonna nah, get really, you right after Justin." Do that no more. We gotta. No, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no. You feel me? First she was slobbing on the knob. Uh, no, you can't. You can't. You, you can't. You can't do. You can't do that. You just. You can't do that. You can't. You can't start something and then just stop it. That's like going celibate on somebody. You know what I mean? Like, if you ain't plan, if you ain't plan on giving the man no head, you shouldn't have married him because you knew that's that's what he was on. That was like, one of his like, like me, like like me and my wife. Look, that I need. I got to have that. You feel me? I got to have. I got. I got to have that. 
So we, we know if, if she you think, so if she if that ain't the type of time no. she was on, if that ain't the type of time she was on, she would have knew off the bat that she wasn't for me. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, so look, no. I got that. Hey, I got the head. So look. So look, so I'm so she already know off the gate, you know, what I'm looking for, what what my requirement was. So I let that be known already. So if that's not something she was willing to fulfill before I married her, we could have deaded that whole issue because that's not something I want to go without in a relationship. And so right. bro don't want to bro don't want to go without that in his marriage because me personally, that's that's one of my love languages. That's one of the ways that I feel appreciated and whatever. So mm. so if you know if she wasn't doing it beforehand, bro just trip. But if she was, they need to go to therapy or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was going to be my next question was whether or not she was doing it before they got married or if something shifted in the marriage and she wasn't doing it. And so I think like, okay, so we're we're joking and this is funny, but this all goes back to something else that was said at the beginning of the conversation about sexual maturity because the reality is is like that can happen within a marriage so i don't know if anybody heard me but what at one point i asked if she was asexual or if she had become asexual so yeah i agree with um what jerry was saying like you may need to go talk to a therapist about it and see if they can navigate through that but these are real things that can happen within a marriage so you can start off on one page sexually and then veer off. It's not impossible to find your way back, but it just all comes down to, are these two people willing to do the work to do that? So I have a question. Me being a celibate woman as I am, <laughs> I, uh, I have these celibacy vows that I do every year. I don't, tell people about them i just do them so say for instance if i didn't hold out to marriage but then when i got married i decided i wanted to do a celibacy vow are y'all saying that i as a married woman don't have that control over my body that i did as a single woman because i have the i have to service my husband in order to fulfill my marriage obligations Absolutely. No, we're saying that you need to I, know about saying that. Wow. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. Jeremy is saying that. I think, yeah. I think, let I think me jump in real quick. I'm, I'm sorry, husband. Jessica. I'm no, you're good. I think that's between you and your husband because each person's sexual needs are different. And I think that's something to be, to be openly discussed with understanding and maturity between you and your husband about what your needs are, what you're expecting, where you're at emotionally, where you're at sexually and physically, where he's at emotionally, sexually and physically, that's where that conversation needs to go. And I think like one thing I'm taking away from this is each of us in this podcast, like we all have different needs. So a lot of us are like, uh uh, hell no, I need it, I need it. And like that's cool. And you got somebody to match that. But we also have to understand that at some point, unfortunately, you may not be on the same page. There may be, it doesn't even have to be anything drastic. It just may be like a Monday and y'all may not be on the same page. Your wife may not feel like slobbing on the knob or you may not feel like munching on it. Like that don't mean you just go walk out the door. It just means you have to meet that person where they are. Now if that continues, then you have to have some serious discussions. But to answer your question, I think that that is between you and your husband. It's not a one size fits all. Right. Uh, and I, I got you, Mariah. Um, yeah. When you're married, you two become one. You're a business. Um, it's two CEOs in that situation and one can't override the other. So frankly, nah, bro, you, y'all got to come sit down and talk. You just can't believe, ah, box closed. Nah, okay. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for Jeremy and his marriage, nah, that ain't working. But for you and your marriage, your husband may be like, okay, what does this look like? How can we figure this out? I just also feel like it need to be discussed ahead of time exactly. because you just can't get married to somebody and then say, oh, I'm going to have these celibacy files every year. So you mean every year between February and March, I ain't going to get none. 
you know, that needs but to be. We say, but so time. that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work for you. Do you know what I'm saying? No, I'm not. So I'm she, not worried about me. I'm saying that it needs to be discussed ahead of time. Right, and I agree. It should be discussed. But what? I, but the point I'm trying to make is, she could get a partner where he's on board with that. Right, but and that's you, what I'm saying. It, yeah, oh, I'm not disagreeing with that. You. I'm just saying that they need to discuss it. Ahead yeah, of time. If she keeps finding niggas that want to be celibate anyway, then this is perfect. <laughs> First of all, you know what? We're going to talk off camera. Hey, Mariah, you had something to say? I, I saw you had your hand up. I, hey, I think one thing that a lot of people don't think about, especially within like a long term relationship or a marriage, um, especially like super single people, like people that have been single for like longer than five years. Mm hmm. That's me. A lot of people think about like spirit, the spiritual aspect that goes into having sex. Like your spirit has to be there in order for you to have sex. So I just exactly. like how men handle like through postpartum depression. Exactly. Spirit might not be there. Like I still love you. I still find you attractive. I still think you're sexy. But for some reason, my spirit just won't bring me the one to lay down and have sex with you right now. And like, maybe I need therapy or whatever. But I guess my question to like the people in the room would be, would celibacy in order to repair spirit so that we can get back to that level? Because I just personally feel like I don't want to have sex with a corpse. I don't want to have sex with somebody who's not in, into it. I don't want to have sex with somebody who's not spiritually there and connected because I'm going to be able to feel all of that. It's not the same. And I feel like the power in a marriage is, in my personal opinion, the spirit, the loyalty, because I'm going to go off a little tangent here. So the Christians might be a little scared. Mm -hmm. I believe sex magic. I believe that once you get to a certain point with your partner, your spirit can connect in a way that you can manifest things for yourself and your family. Yes. And so it's really important to try to keep the sex sacred and not just for the, the sake of let me go in here and get him a nut off real quick. Mm -hmm. you know? Like it doesn't necessarily have to be deep and spiritual candles lit. You know what I'm saying? Every single time, but there it has, to, sometimes. has to make right. sense. But you you're know? talking about the sanctity of the connection. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I am. No, I, I, so I know exactly what, what you're talking about. Yeah, I've, I've, we've been, I mean, we've been, you know, the Jack Rabbits, and then we even work 10 <laughs> to 12 hour shifts, and we like, bitch, don't touch me. You right. know, we've been there, but we yeah. always get back because we always, we we got that spiritual connection, and we know, like, look, okay, we've been like two days now. You know, <laughs> we know what time it is. So mm -hmm. I, that's I definitely agree with everything that you guys are saying because I am married and the spiritual connection with me and my husband ha definitely has to be there. Like we got to have a connection or like, like I told you, for me, it's a mental thing. You have to communicate with me. You have to talk to me. You have to, my love language is communication, like on the highest level, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. if we don't have that, then we have a problem all around, you know? Mm -hmm. Just oh, to yeah. kind of go off of what, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, just to kind of go off of what Mariah was saying, though, I think after marriage, if y'all need to basically like hit a reset button, maybe do be celibate, maybe go on dates, whatever it is that you need to do to reconnect, then fine. But before marriage, fuck all that. I mean, go out there, bro. You need to. I, like, I think the, the one thing that I always wondered about virgins. And I dated a girl that was a virgin, took her virginity. It was the worst decision of my life. If you listen to this, never take a girl's virginity, dude. It's not worth it. Um, and Jessica, that's a big <laughs> ass mug that you have. Um, but I really think It's that, no lemon water. Drink it every night. I mean, it's fine. It's just like the, yeah. the cup is the same size as your head. I could not just continue to see it and not make a statement. Like, it's a beautiful mug, but it's just <laughs> for <fun. laughs> but, um, But I do think that it's really important to get your whole phase out because I've always wondered, what do you do? How do you, if you are a virgin, you get married and then you have sex, how in the world do you go walking down the street, walking in the mall and be like, I don't want to fuck everything in here. How do you stop that? Cause I mean, I'm sorry. I don't hmm. get it. It doesn't make sense to me. It's yeah, best you turn the curiosity off with somebody at some point like through work or whatever type of things you know what i'm saying like you can't grow attraction to people and you know what i'm saying especially i feel like people who wait until they um 
get married to have sex find themselves in predicaments where they're in affairs and things like that because they're like oh wow like the sex is pretty good with my husband but I just discovered sex toys and that was great so like I know that I can intensify this situation maybe I should try another person <laughs> like I just I feel like it's a rabbit hole for more exploration but that's natural as a human so I that's why I think the not exploring your sexual um journey prior to marriage can be a little damaging once you get into a marriage mm. I agree with that yeah good point it's important for you to know yourself and know what pleases you so that way you can teach your partner how to please you and then you can discover new ways together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I was saying. Was Let saying. me ask y'all something. It's like, definitely fun. A common, I, I want to say a common argument that we're probably going to receive when this airs is that if you really love someone, you can teach them how to love you properly You can teach them how to, you know, satisfy your every need. Let me tell you why that's bullshit. Let me tell you why that's bullshit. It's bullshit, for real. One, niggas ain't patient. You want (laughs) to know how niggas ain't patient? You ever seen the memes of the black mom doing the little math problems with the kids? If Johnny had four apples and (laughs) took away two apples, how many motherfucking apples do Johnny got? And when Johnny say one, Johnny get the shit popped out on. You ain't going to be back to my dick? Mm-mm. 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 You telling me to lick your shit counterclockwise until you vibrate twice for six minutes, then lick <laughs> clockwise while scratching your thigh? Look, man, please and what if I showed you a video though? Say what now? <laughs> what if I showed you a video though? Now, I gotta, see, that's different though. You got a tutorial. You <laughs> see, that's different though. YouTube because, has everything. Nah, that ain't gonna work for something because you're you giving a first grader twelfth grade homework. I mean, you might be a little smarter than you think you are. Your potential outweighs. <laughs> when, no, it does. does not. You gonna so, end up. Potential does not outweigh anything. What's gonna happen? I'm You're being funny, y'all. I'm trying to be I'm the layer. Sometimes. The whole time I've been trying to add layers to this thing. You know what I'm saying? That's all I've been trying to do. So y'all don't take what I say <laughs> seriously because I really am a celibate woman. You know what I'm saying? I don't do what they be doing. Shut your ass up. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Can someone please take her bottle? <laughs> yeah, she ain't drinking right. the glass. It's already gone, baby. You can have the bottle because the contents are gone. Down the hatch. Yeah, you can't. You can't try to. You can't try to turn somebody into what you want them to be. You know, because either either it's in them or it ain't. You know, either it's in them right. or it ain't. So because the the very thing that you might be trying to teach them about loving you, they might not even be into that. You know? mm. Right. I think experience no- is the best teacher, though. Like, yeah. I think experience and them kind of find, like they said, finding themselves and trying to figure out things on their own way is a bigger, you know, a bigger teacher than anything. Because you can tell me this is how you like. You can show me a video, so to speak. But am I really going to want to do this? And am I, am I really going to do it like that person? I got to, you know, do this for myself and make it my own so that uh-huh. I can put my, you know what I'm saying? So I can make it mine. I can name my shit, you know? <laughs> Unmotivated so people, head is the worst thing ever. To do that stuff, you know, because they a lot of people are not motivated to do, you know, certain things that their partner want them to do. Because righteously, they don't feel right doing it. They might not be into it. They might not like it. They might not want to. So right. I mean, you can't really, you can't really coach coach nobody to necessarily do it how you want to because they might not even, they might not even like that. And another thing about you know like sex and stuff like that is that I think for men we are more motivated and relationships are easier it's easier to make a woman happy when they're getting you right you know what I mean like if the woman is taking care of me I ain't got to ask for it you know whatever she treating me good uh me me doing going above and beyond is gonna be nothing like that's gonna be minimal because pe- a lot of people are motivated by feeling appreciated, right. by feeling by like feeling love. Yeah, yeah. By a lot of people is motivated by that. Let's say, you know, let's say I'm always um, <laughs> I'm always doing something for my girl, but she don't do she don't do nothing back for me. I'm I'm gonna feel less motivated to even right. be be trying to make make her happy to the extent that I have been, 
you know, because she ain't getting me right. So why would I even be motivated to get her right? You know what I mean? Right. Definitely agree. And especially if you're doing something that's like without passion, like if you've ever had like somebody like guys and girls can kind of relate to this. If somebody's going down on you and you just like, and they just like, uh, mm, you know what I mean? Like ain't, ain't nobody, it's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, fuck it. never mind. Let me, let me just go ahead and do about my business. Like it's, it's gotta be something with, with passion. And I feel like even I like a lot of guys are, um, if not their first love language is like one of their top three is, is physical touch. So like when it, when it happens to be something where, you know, me personally, I, I think like, like Mariah was talking about, like there's a dip, uh, deeper kind of feeling to it. Like there's an exchange of energy when you have sex. And, and like, for me, it's like you giving a part of yourself to me. So like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm honored that you do that or I'm honored that you decide to give me that part of you because, uh, you know, I don't want you giving it to everybody else. And if you choose to give it to me, that's, that's something that I, I appreciate. So yeah, it's, it's just one of those things where like you really got to, you know, be on the same wavelength when it comes to, you know, your sexual energy. Amen. Yeah, I Amen. I think a lot of it too, we, we have to remember that even though you don't like doing something, you, you might be into something that your partner isn't or vice versa. Yeah, there'll be times where you'll do it anyway. You'll do it because you love them. But if, it's, if it becomes something that is forced, you can really feel the tension because it's like, dang, like, nigga, you want me to do that again? Like, I you already told you I ain't into that. Like, I'm personally not into sucking toes. I ain't into it. It just ain't my thing. People that do it, more power to you. My girl wears sandals. I can't do it. I'm so sorry. And you know what I did? I found me somebody that don't like their toes suck. But I wouldn't know that if we hadn't done something before marriage. So it's like, go out there and have fun, man. Like you, you gotta, you gotta know yourself above all before you can try to go to somebody else. But I'm gonna give my all to you. You don't even know what your all is. Just to kind of bring us back to the whole abstinence before marriage, because we don't went all over the fucking map on this one. I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. I think the best thing that ever happened to me was my whole phase. I'm being completely real because Preach. real shit. I thought I was here going into college. But then I went to college and um, I met an older woman. I had mm. sex with my first older lady. And my God, my God. Uh, yeah, it changed my life, right? Like, turned fuck- his ass out? <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I need to tell this part. When Jeremy really? came back one night and he was like, nigga, like, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I... I died laughing the whole time. I'm sorry. Go back to the story. That's I'm funny. Gonna she took your V-card all over again, huh, bro? Bruh, like, it's, it's real shit. He made them biscuits afterwards. <laughs> uh, nah, okay, bro, she, he had pork chops <laughs> and gravy. Uh, shut your ass up. Um, <laughs> but anyway, on, on some real shit, it's really oh, humbling. When you low. think you you know everything, and then you you get introduced to new shit. Um, mm. This was the first you time. You ain't booted in you. Who no. <laughs> mm, not that guy. Not that guy. And if y'all like eating groceries, more power to you, but that ain't for me. I ain't sucking no toes and I ain't licking no ass, bro. Straight up on God. And don't even try to anyway, anyway. I'm gonna <laughs> reference something Mariah said. I believe sex magic is real. Um with the older lady, that was the first time I had sex and she was speaking affirmations into me. And that was like something totally new to me like that literally well, staring yeah. me in my eyes and telling me i can do i was going through something she was telling me i can beat this and mm. it was like a nurturing sexual combination it was crazy but it stuck with me it it literally had i had like a little bit more of a pep in my step on god and um <laughs> that's just what it is so i i definitely feel like I know we kid and call it a whole phase, but it's just like finding out yourself sexually, just discovering yourself because we always talk about balance and we all know that is mind, body, and spirit. And I feel like people forget about the body part. 
You know what I'm saying? We all get into the mind and the spirit. Like, you can satisfy me mentally. That's great. You can satisfy me spiritually. That's great. But can you make me nut, though? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's yeah. on God. Like, there's nothing more demeaning than you giving everything you got as long as you can. And then and you hear, enough. and afterwards. That is nothing. It makes me feel like I didn't complete my, the job. I didn't give you what you needed. So now I feel insufficient. So now I have to go two routes. Oh Either God. I can stay with my ego and be like, fuck that bitch. Or I can be like, okay, let's sit and talk. What do you like? What can I do different? Okay, well, this is what you can do different. Okay, what can we compromise here? Because I ain't even asked. Like, shit like that. As long as you got that communication going. Communication. That's it. Yeah. There's oh, a lot sex, of people that sex, can't do that Sex shit should too. never be a chore. Bruh, right. That, if that makes sense. Sex should never be a chore. Like, you should, like, you should have sex with your significant other. Like, it's because it's like, oh, well, you know, I mean, we married or whatever. So, I, I mean, I guess I'm supposed to. Like, that's, like, that's, that, that messed up like, the whole, yeah, that, that messed up the whole experience. Like, that's, like sex is just that point, that climax point that you get to, you know, with that love and all the work and stuff that y'all put into your relationship. That's just where y'all souls intertwine, like, and like to say that energy, like that's just y'all bringing y'all energy together one more time because y'all love each other that much. Right. You know, so I feel that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to I'm going to actually disagree a little bit with that. Um I think that sex can start out a chore because I mean just like you said it's it's an exchange of energy and some days I be on one don't really want to do nothing and some days she don't want to do nothing but then it'd be like you know what it's cool I could put on my big boy pants and go break this back real quick and that's fine. And so it starts off like, all right, let me just go do my husbandly duties. And then somewhere along there, it tr it transforms from a from a chore into, oh no, we here now, like we good. Now we're back into our regular exchange. But it kind of started off a chore because sometimes, I mean, different people do different shit. Like if I've been at work all day, I got to come home and I got to do some work around the house, or you got to do some work around the house. That be People be sleep, like people be acting like, oh, this whole pandemic, you married, you had somebody, you've been booed up this whole time. Bitch, I've been working. Why y'all be thinking married people fuck seven days a week? I don't we know. Don't. That shit's not real. <laughs> like, it's, it's not real. Some days you just be like, bro, I ain't got it, but. You know, you give me like three strokes. I I can get in the mood. Just I just lay here for a minute, baby. What you gonna do? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, put, your, put your leg up real quick. If I just what let me just get started. Me, baby. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, so I, that's my only thing. I will say that sometimes it can be a chore, but Man, it look at becomes it. something real. more. That's real. Mm -hmm. That is real. There, That's there, real. There. I appreciate you all's talk. transparency. Oh, listen, I'm too. I'm 30 years old in a 60 year old man body. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I ain't right. got time. <laughs> These knees is wait weak. a minute. I think you need to switch it. You see, you see it, the one wait thing. A these week, I done had a car accident. My back hurt. I don't you know have what, what he's been drinking. I still do what I got. I always eat. talk about that back, but you always breaking decks, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> If daddy ain't raised no bitch, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey you, gotta you gotta keep it in the family, bro. Come on yeah. now. Yo, yo, that... <laughs> wait a minute. I'm I don't, even, I don't even think I like that reference. I'm not sure. Right. I, yeah, I, I, I don't think you should have co signed that, Kane. I don't think you should have co signed that. What's the safe yo. word? What's the safe word? I didn't mean word? it the way you said. I didn't mean it the way y'all said. You know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to put my phone on mute because the swamp water got me now. I'm drowning. The fuck are y'all doing in Mississippi? <laughs> So I want to pose something to you guys. Um, we we literally been around the world and back. Um, I guess to to advocate for those who are, you know, on that journey of celibacy, and then you know they might get to that point. I can see how if you're dating, 
you need to let them know, but you don't want to scare them off, if, if that makes sense. Because sometimes the word celibacy, have a nigga like, nope, swipe left. Like, you get what I'm saying? So what is a conducive way to not scare someone off, but at the same time, let them know, hey, I'm not there yet. I'm currently on this journey. You know what I'm saying? Like, wh- how would y'all present it? If, you know, devil's advocate, if the shoe was on the other foot, you know what I'm saying? Because oh, I, I have seen... I have seen where someone, I, hell, even myself, uh, one of the women I used to date, she was emotionally and physically abusive. So I literally could not get erect for a minute. Like my mind just wouldn't let me get there. And so I had to take a while. I had to step back a little bit for some time before I could get, you know what I'm saying, attracted again. So like, what is, I guess, what is your way you would communicate that if you were dating, you know, you're celibate because you're recovering. How would you let them know that, hey, I'm currently on this path? Um, I think for me, for one thing, I need, I think people need to stop doing this asking for, like, you can be patient with me, but stop asking me to, to take my time. Like, I feel like time is one thing that you can't get back. And I said people, and people always ask for you to be patient with them or stop, girl. Or, you know, or do anything like that. Sorry, the baby right there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, she just came out of nowhere. So, yeah. So, like, you know, like, one thing you can ask them, like, you can, I feel like you, it needs to be a conversation, um, but it needs to be a conversation uh, it, it, that's not too much read into, because when we read into things, then you start thinking, like, okay, now I got to be patient, now I got to take my time, now it's how long is she going to be feeling this way, how long is he going to be feeling this way, and time is one thing we can't get back, because one thing, we go into these things, and we're like, oh, okay, we're, we're on board. I feel like when that on board switches or changes, it needs to be another conversation. Like I thought this is something that I can do, but unfortunately, like this is too much for me because I feel like a lot of people waste a lot of time waiting, quote unquote, and then they don't get the outcome that they want. And you can't get that time back that you done waited, wasted. And that's a big thing for me. Time, I don't like to waste because it's so much that you can do. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like people, when they, I guess their attitude or when they feel like it's going to change or they have that shift in their mindset, it needs to be a conversation head instead of just biting their tongue or trying to, what is it? Stay, stay safe. You know, so so they won't hurt the person feelings. Like people do that shit and it's like pointless to me, I guess. Just be real at this point. People don't be real no more. They just kind of, you know, go with it and just say, Oh, I don't want to hurt her. Oh, this is going to be a hard conversation. I don't want to have this conversation. Just have the come down and see, you know, it might not be as bad. She might be ready to be not be celibate no more, or he might be ready. So I just think that people need to stop being, uh, sorry. <laughs> people need to stop. Uh, I had a nice client. You know, people need to just stop, uh, you know, stop wasting time and just actually keep the conversation and the line, you know, open. But yeah, that's it. I mean, I, I personally feel like if, if you are celibate, there's going around and trying to ease into the fact that you're celibate is probably not to your advantage. If you are celibate, I think you should, this should be one of the talking points. Maybe as you're asking about relationships, oh, well, what, tell me about your last, last relationship. Oh, well, I'm celibate right now and blah, blah, blah. Cool. Bring that up because then the tone is set up front that I don't need to be expecting to get nothing from you. Instead, what I really need to do is just like either take the time then to make the decision to learn to get to know you and see if that's where I want to go with you. Or yeah, I'm just going to swipe to the side and keep on moving, which is fine. Like there's no reason to try to sneak it in there and ease it into somebody like, nah, go ahead and say it so that you're not wasting, just like she said, like, you're not wasting their time, they're not wasting your time, and everybody can go ahead and be cool. Yeah, you just gotta go ahead and rip that band-aid off. Like, there's no, it's no, like, easy way to go ahead and ease into that one, because if you three or four dates in, and then after that, you know, you go in, it gets hot and heavy, and y'all like, well, wait a second, I'm celibate, folks are gonna be upset, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you just go ahead, just say, hey, listen, this is what I'm on. Like your feelings may get hurt, but that's the life you live as a celibate person. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if they're not on that save wavelength that you are, then 
it is it's okay but you got to be able to you know take the good with the bad yeah definitely like you were just saying how you you go on and say like you go on those dates and then you know how people say they're still a bit but then they be want to flirt with you then they want to rub on you and touch you that is the worst thing like you need to pick a side and that's really the thing is i think that's where the issue lies people don't pick a side they try to choose like okay i'm gonna be selling it today but ooh, when he uh, next to me and i get out i'm feeling all these feelings i ain't felt in a while i want to just try to play it out but then i'm gonna stop him in the middle of it Y'all like i that. feel like that's wild and it's wrong and people need to just for real pick a side because it's a waste of time like i feel like that's the kind of thing that like dudes just get really upset with just because and and apparently guys do the same shit but like uh yeah like if we if we're gonna be like if we're going to be celibate, then you need to stay on your side of the pew. You need to stay on your side of the booth when we had, when we had dinner, you know what I'm saying? Like we can hold hands and that's about it. Like, don't, don't come over here starting no mess because then after that, like now I'm all hot and bothered for no reason. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, you just blue ball it for no reason. Let me ask you something. Do you think, and, and this, maybe this is just me playing devil's advocate, so don't beat me up. Do you think that sometimes intimacy could get confused with, you know, flirting? Because we, why you had mentioned earlier that guys, for a lot of guys, physical touch is a love language that does, you know, get things going. Is it possible to be celibate and still be intimate while maintaining that border? You know what I'm saying? That's a slippery slope, it, though. It can. It can. It, I, I think it can. It's just that. It just depends on, you know, what what the level of intimacy is. Like, mm -hmm. if we just hold their hands, you know, forehead kisses and stuff of that nature, like lighthearted, you know, real lighthearted, you know, stuff, that's, you know, that's cool. But, you know, once you start kissing on people's necks and kissing them in the mouth with your tongue and rubbing on them, look, man, you, you, you stepping into a whole nother realm, man. It, you can you go from PG thirteen to R. Yeah, yeah, you can have <laughs> intimacy. You feel me? You can have the BT sensors, you know, and and just be hugging, you know, you know, cuddling and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But once you get a little too touchy, you know, a little too frisky at some point, that's gonna send the wrong signal. So it's it's a it's a it's a line that you cross. You know, once you once you get down in it and really start you know, tongue kissing folks, kissing them on the neck and rubbing all on them and stuff like that. Telling on yourself. And you, you. It's the kissing with the tongue for me. That's the part that yeah. keeps getting every time. I know, it makes me feel so grossly out. Jerry, you, Jerry, man, you sound like you 80 like, years old, man. They be down there kissing with their tongue. Hey, I told y'all. I told y'all you got an old man's soul in his body, man. I told y'all. What they saw in the mouth. You're kissing them on their mouth. I was, I was thinking that I was like, am I the only one that kissed with the tongue? Is this new? Hey. It's not the way they say it. It's not nasty but, but, and like for real wrong. Though, but for real though, Jared has like a huge, like a really good point because I know people that they won't kiss at all if it's not someone that they're trying to be in a relationship with. Because Me? for them, kissing is a super intimate, intimate. thing. While for some people I know is nigga, it's just a kiss. Like I've had arguments with people and they're like, oh, I can't kiss on a one night stand. To me, nigga, kissing is a part of it. Like if we having sex, we're going to kiss. But some but people are like, no, I can't kiss no random. Nigga, if you put your dick in the random, why can't you put your mouth on the random? I don't understand. That's different. You got a shield on, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, bro. I mean, it's, it's, but it's, the whole point is intimacy is different for everybody so it is a super slippery slope if you are celibate two celibate people getting intimate is dangerous one celibate person and one person that's like i'm out here and i'm just waiting for you and y'all start getting intimate that that can lead to really bad situations because you know god forbid that it lead to some type of assault or something because, you know, oh, I w he went crazy and he thought he was giving a signal and all she was doing was, you know, patting the nigga on the shoulder. And he was like, nah, she want me. Like, there's crazy ass people out there. And it goes yeah. both ways. So it's like, if you, if you're going to be celibate, keep your hands to yourself. 
Like straight yeah. up. There, there's a there's a level of responsibility as a celibate person that you got to be able to know when to to be there and when not to. Because like you can't be trying to spend the night. You can't be trying to cuddle all night. Man, mm-hmm. I'm too grown. I'm too grown for this shit, man. Like you said, you said over. Like we we do with some like not, and it's not to say that like you don't have a choice in the matter, but that's the kind of like that contract you sign in that situation. Like mm-hmm. oh, well, I'm staying mm-hmm. the night over. Like we we finna do something. So no, you like be gone by four o'clock, bro. Uh, Ebony, so, I love you, you to death. You uh, can't. You I'm with you, bro. You can't be spending yeah, the night. You, you instead, I sleep in the <laughs> new. I sleep in the new. You gotta cuddle up with me. Talking about something you spend the night. It's gonna be a problem. One person, one person can't be celibate, and the other one not be okay with it because it's gonna be morale killing. Like it's gonna be, you know, it's just gonna be deadening to the other person. The the one that's all right with being celibate might be like, ah, you know, whatever. You know, I want to be celibate. They should be cool with that. But the other person is like, well, they really, you know, I mean, they really handling me right now because I don't. I I don't even I don't even support that. Like that ain't even, you know, I'm I'm being deprived, you know, so that it won't it won't, unless both parties is like, all right, you know, we could do this celibacy thing, you know. That's a that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Well, I am celibate, but I watch some really nice porn. So am I still celibate? <laughs> I don't know. Can somebody know that you're asexual? Because I feel like I'm asexual. <laughs> I feel like when like you're you celibate, idiot. you can have sex with yourself. So I feel like you're good. Yeah. Masturbation okay. don't count. I wasn't joking. I was being serious. I thought it did. I thought it did. <laughs> no, I, thought, I, thought it did. <laughs> I gotta Google this. Oh, oh if it does, damn. For a minute. Oh, I, gotta I really. That's what I mean. I wasn't being funny. I was being serious. <laughs> oh, if it does, damn. That's a strong journey. Who else celibate then? Somebody else celibate. It's not just me. Will there be one? Let me go ahead and mute myself now. I feel like that was that part when are there any hearts in the house tonight? (laughs) (laughs) But for real though, I was just asking because I just needed to know. So thank you for asking that. Clarifying that because people judge me. Abstinence does not include sexual activity, period. Yeah, you can't mas if you masturbate, that is uh nah. Any type of masturbation violates your celibacy. Oh so really? you void you voided the terms and conditions? Oh for it. Well damn. <laughs> well, I mean, but uh, I didn't do it. <laughs> you did it to yourself, so literally. <laughs> no, I You're... watched somebody else do it to somebody else. It's different. <laughs> so what? So wait, are you just I saying just, just watching and no action? Yeah, I mean, who okay. just watches porn? So them? you just split from ESPN to Pornhub and just go. I mean, right? y'all trying to tell me y'all don't watch porn on y'all lunch break? We're trying to. No, I don't. I don't watch. No, no. Oh, y'all lie. Y'all lie. Y'all lie. No. Y'all lie. Y'all lie. Y'all lie. Y'all lie. Y'all Give me my props because y'all know y'all do that shit. Oh God, I do not watch porn on my lunch break. Y'all do it. Hey, you might as well hang it up if you got. Baby, you might well. I think it's time we just get a person because if you got to do that, you can't focus on your Chick Fil A all the way. You don't need. I mean, I told y'all I've been single six years though, so it's different. I'm definitely being celibate. I still feel like I'm celibate, though. What you feel like and what you are are two different things, clearly. (laughs) Hey, if you like it, I love it. Shit, you you do. I mean, don't listen. Do you, boo? But don't be one of those. Don't let me see a news article. You know, Mississippi woman fired on job or pulling up like some crazy shit on your phone. If it was a job in Mississippi, that wasn't me. But if it was a job in Alabama, that might have been me. Stay up, they Wi Fi, they can see them stuff. Bro, I'm trying to tell you, I'm, I'm too scared. I'm too scared. I didn't use that Wi Fi though, I used mine. Okay, just check it. I'm more to get I use my data. Yeah, I turned the Wi Fi off, bro. I know how to do that. Her last name ain't on her easy. Oh, uh, it's E Breezy, bro. We E Breezy in this thing. So, cause she's just giving all the, she's just giving it all. Oh, they're, they're That's why I'm doing it. I, t- I 
they're going to find her. Everything. I would 20, <laughs> you say they're going to find her. Know. They're going to find her. Oh, boy. Somebody going <laughs> to... I don't know what y'all talking about. Me don't, tag like, me hey. in this, don't tag me in this video. <laughs> Bruh, somebody's going to be like, hey, who the girl who like to watch porn and shit? Like, I'm literally going to get that message. <laughs> I'm literally going to get that message. Do not use me for any of the, the commercials, okay? Oh, that shit a wrap. <laughs> That's your rap. It's done. What you know mean? What You're the main attraction. <laughs> no. We talk no, about abstinence, and you talking about watching porn on lunch break. Yeah. Like it's, I was just trying to be cool. transparent. Yeah, this person needs to have a you know way for sex or romance. Oh, but do you guys watch porn though? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like people who are celibate and abstinent can watch porn. Personally. It's a slippery slope, though. There's, again. there is technically nothing wrong with said. watching. It's engaging. <laughs> oh, yeah, so if you just, if you just watching it, that's cool. your contract. Yes. Okay. And even on a lunch break, see, my porn search is like a wormhole. Like I start here, but I end up going? in like Albuquerque somewhere. But like, this is what I do at home. I go down the rabbit hole, but at work. I go and you know watch the previews of what I watched for you know what I'm saying the good I know scout exactly what minute porn is. at work. Yes. No, she got a I playlist watch. that she saved. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she's got she got a scout. Oh, I, I got a belly. I got fifteen minutes. Start. I know what minute to go to, and you know what I'm saying. I shuffle through them hoes because I know which ones I like. I know what I like. You got them bookmarked, essentially. Exactly. There we go. This Damn. is hilarious. Damn it. This kid, y'all know what I'm talking about. I, pers- I personally That's love why I'm not honesty. taking my camera off. Like, I'm going to read this picture the- up. But we see... Wait, it's, wait, it's still wait. you, though. It's, it's, it's not like it's, 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 it's not like it's not like it's a, like a scenery it's not me, of a me, forest. It's like me, but it's not me. me. It's All different. Right. So on that note, I appreciate. Oh Jesus! It. Jesus. <laughs> um, oh. Work for us. I'm sorry, sweetheart. We we Crystal joined us uh, a while back. Look, we we have just been going for what we know. Uh, have you had any thoughts on celibacy or searching porn in lunch break? Um, yeah, I don't really search porn at work, but um, I mean, I will say. <laughs> I kind of been in the middle, you know, I've been listening to everybody, but my situation was, is a little bit different when it comes to that. Like, I feel like I was involuntarily, or I don't even, re- I didn't even realize that I was celibate or like abstaining from sex because I got pregnant with my daughter while I was on birth control. And I wasn't really, you know, in the serious, serious relationship with the guy. Like we were cool, but it was just kind of like, you know, when we was together, we was together. Yeah. So, um, about three months after I had cut him off, I went back to get my new shot. And they was like, well, you're pregnant. What? I'm what? Yeah, you're three months pregnant. Um, You want to come back next month, you can find out what you're having. So like literally a month later, I was finding out that I was having a daughter. So for me, I was like devastated. He had already moved on to a new relationship. So it was like, I had to go back and call him and be like, yo, so about that uh, last time we hooked up, I'm crazy. You know, like, it was a really bad situation for me. So, like, I literally couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I was sick as a fucking dog over that. And, like, after I had her, you know, and then she looked just like his ass. So it's like, bruh, like, now I got to look at this every day. You know, so it's like, I already had a son that was two. You know, I wasn't trying to have another kid. You know, I was being precautious on, on, on the depo shot. And with a two-year-old son and a newborn, you know, I was just, like, completely overwhelmed because I was by myself. So, you know, immobile with no family, you know, I was just trying to get through every day. Like, my goal was to get through, you know, the end of the day, every single day. And, like, I looked up and, like, a year and a half had passed by. I had no dates, no text buddies, no come by when the kids go to bed. No, nothing. I was completely exhausted. Like, if my parents kept my kids, all I did was sleep. Like, I would go in the room and I would just sleep, you know, the whole day away. They're like, you've been sleeping for two days. I'm like, I needed it, you know? So it's like, for me, I was really in a place of just, like, a depression, you know? Because I was like, I wasn't, you know, trying to be, you know, baby mama twice. You know what I'm saying? My ego was hurt, you know. I'm a college graduate, good job, you know, never in nobody's drama or nothing like that. And here I am, I got two kids now. So it was like, for me, I just didn't feel attractive anymore. I didn't feel like, you know, 
sex was something that I won't say I couldn't get, but I just didn't desire it at the time. So because your ass was tired. It was, about, it was about two years in. I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to kind of get back out there. And the first dick I got was like a vagina sausage. And I'm like, bruh, okay, you know what? I ain't ready yet. I ain't ready. Cause that shit, like, I really wanted to fight the dude because this it was the shit was so small. Like, you know, I've been chilling and then you know you're gonna bring that to the table. Like, you should have just bowed out when I said it's been a minute, you know, make it enjoyable for me. So I don't know, like now I'm at a point where I've been trying to get back out there and date again, but like my daughter's about to be four now, and like I haven't been in a relationship since I had her. So, you know, I moved to New Orleans area. I'm in Slidell now. I don't know anybody. You know, I just got a babysitter. So like I'm just really getting to the point that I can go out and, you know, kind of meet people. So it's like, you know, where is the time? Nobody comes to my house because you know, every time you look online, somebody's boyfriend has shot up the whole family. And, you know, you can't really have people in your place where your kids are. So it's like, it's a process for like, I would say some single mom, this is a process to get to. So now I'm ready, but you know, we're going to see what happens. So maybe the next time you have a podcast, I can have a different answer, but you know, I've been chilling. I've been on chill for a while, but I was really distraught. That's the best word for it. I was fucking shocked. Like, bro, I'm pregnant again. So, you know, I just been chilling, but I think after something like that happens, it's like, you know, hold on, let me chill out because it ain't no more like, you know, one night stand stuff. I'm not on birth control no more. I'm like, if I got pregnant anyways, what's the point? Like, I'm not even gonna take it no more. So I'm not on birth control, you know, not having sex. So I just been chilling, but you know, I'll date here and there, but it ain't never got to a point where we just got back at it again. So I'm cheering for you, Chris. <laughs> you what? I'm cheering for you. <laughs> you thank and you, you be careful when you get back out there because you fertile as fuck <laughs> oh god fam like nigga oh, you god they said oh. we got you with this injection nobody <laughs> said bitch please this pussy popping and no nah, <laughs> fam no nah, fam <laughs> i'm chilling though we on chill right now though so we good respect respect and 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 all jokes aside all jokes aside you know, we, we're here to, to crack jokes and make light of the situation, but that's devastating. You take all the precautions, you know, that you think, because there's a lot that comes with, you know what I'm saying, you guys getting that shot, because it, it jacks up your hormones. It, yeah, because, like, I've gained weight, and, like, I'm like, come on now, I'm craving for sugar all the time, eating whole fucking strawberry cakes and shit. Like, it threw me off bad. Like, it threw me off bad. So I'm like, you know what? on top of getting pregnant still and then they're like first of all if you like over 175 it's not even as effective so i'm like y'all could have kind of told me that in the beginning oh, yeah you know yeah. i was like i'm thinking i'm good and Is it's like damn. I, I, terms and conditions i ain't know that yeah yeah it's, i i definitely understand i feel you i actually got pregnant with my she's eight years old now i was uh, on college break and i came home to my boyfriend and i used protection and i was on birth control so Shit. she was just supposed to be here. So I get it. I know exactly how you feel. Like, I mean, I had my my now three-year-old years later, but that single mom shit ain't where it was. Like, I wasn't trying to date. I wasn't trying to be with nobody. I was trying to make sure my mind was right. You know right. what I'm saying? Because that was traumatic because, you know, birth control, all this shit supposed to stop you. Exactly. You know? But yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I was put it. away from it. Like, I didn't want nobody to touch me. Like, bro, I don't want to hear nothing. At all. <laughs> So I'm, I'm a good dude, and then you know I'm pregnant. And you already dealing with somebody else. A couple months later, you been with this bitch too. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just I didn't like that. So I just been kind of taking my time because like people change, especially when kids come into play. You know, it's like a whole different scenario, and it takes the excitement out of it. Like once you've been, you know, through something like that, it's not as it's it's more serious. I put it that way. It's more of a like, okay, I'm dealing with this guy. I really, I'm really feeling him. I know this is about to be something because if anything happened, you know, I want to know he got my back. So that's kind of where I am right now. Mm. Mm. I will say that is one um, angle of celibacy that none of us kind of talked about tonight. You know, I, I, w I wish you would have said something earlier, Chris, when all those knuckleheads <laughs> was in here arguing <laughs> because you, you bring up a valid point. We uh, are approaching everything. Too. Mm -hmm. I said a comment is definitely something that happens more often than yeah. normal too. It's like for sure. We're bringing everything from the point of two no children having people coming together. But just like you said, you, you were basically celibate without choice. It just kind of happened. So 
when you get these single parents that literally haven't been with anybody in four years because it's you know it's, it's about me and my kids and my family cool i get get that but um uh, when they they come out of a point where they're not trying to be celibate but you have to approach them almost kind of with caution and, mm-hmm. and bring a little bit more love and attention because they need that right that and you can't just bring anybody around your kids like, Thanks. Like, uh, like I'm, I'm a single dad over here. So like, it's just me and my son. So all the time that we have to do, like, it's like, okay, I can't bring her around because you know what I'm saying? My kid Ben gets really attached to folks. So like, he'll be like, Oh, well, what happened to such and such? And then be like, you can't really say like, Oh no, it was like a hit it and quit it. Right. (laughs) You can't really be like that. So, uh, so like it's one of those things where you gotta really kind of watch what what you do and, and everything right. like that. Like you gotta get a good weekend at like the mm-hmm. first, and the first day of your weekend is to get your strength back to sleep because you, you missed all, <laughs> you missed about forty seven days of sleep. And so you need to go ahead and get that, and then after right. that you be like, all right, now that I'm rested, who gonna get it? Exactly, <laughs> exactly, right, right. So we're supposed to every weekend. Even. I wouldn't even call that celibacy on the single parent front, like, because that's not even intentional, you know, like celibacy, right. I feel like, I feel like is, you know, a choice, like, okay, okay, I'm about to be celibate, but for you to have kids and to be very selective with who you have sex with, mm-hmm. that's just maturity, mm-hmm. you know, well, that's, 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 that's just, yeah. that's just maturity and, you know, watching out for yourself and for your kids. You know, like y'all said, y'all don't want to bring any and everybody around your kids, especially when you know the boundaries that you have with mm-hmm. the different people that you associate. So I wouldn't even call that celibate. I would just call that being cautious and being a parent. You know, yeah. Being a parent, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got no yeah. choice. Yeah. You'd be like, damn. Yeah. I really yeah. wish I could go. Like, especially yeah. during the pandemic, yeah. though. Yeah. Like, bro, like you got to watch for the Rona, and you can't get nothing. Like it's been hard. Like it's been hard. Okay, okay. You can't have nobody in the house. They might have this shit. Then you got to explain to the kids we coughing and shit. Like, bro, we can't do that. So we can't lock the house. Oh, because right Mama wanted some dick. Uh, you know? I'm talking, but I got it's that dick. I feel you good. <laughs> Look, please, please be so, careful because your you first time, Chris, do not get pregnant. <laughs> you look, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm about to be the deadbeat daddy on the third one. I'm not getting baby mama no more. <laughs> not getting baby it's mama no baby more. Mama okay. she, she, so, be like, she be know, like, here's here's the baby. You got it. Um, <laughs> That's it. Just treat them at the damn doorstep, okay? Make sure exactly. they have to like it. Not getting me no more. So, she, she yeah, I just want to know, but you know, I'm sorry. That was terrible. Fingers crossed for the new year. You know. Yeah, and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's definitely gonna be hard because uh, me and my husband have been together for three years, and we have a blend, a blended family, and it is, it was, it's still hard to this day for me to just kind of leave the house. Like I yeah. know he's not gonna do nothing, but it's still hard. I still don't, I don't like nobody to watch my kids, not my husband, like not my my folks. Like I just, that's just how I am as a parent, like a parent. I'd be like, okay, let me call them like twenty five times. Like that's how it. I still haven't let go. You know. So yeah. it's gonna be hard regardless. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy and my other frat brother, his name is Mike Jordan. They were about the only ones that really watched Ben. And so like now, now Jeremy's at Mobile and my other fr- uh, frat brothers in Jacksonville. So it's just me and Ben and we just look at each other. And, you, <laughs> and there's only so many conversations that you can have with an eight year old. Right. Like, I'm, I'm so tired of talking about Beyblades. I'm so tired of talking about any man, listen, and it's like you was talking about, it, 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 it. COVID, COVID has had it where we just been in the house. I had to get a damn dog so he could be like, listen, go talk to this motherfucker. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone, bro. Right. So him and the dog, I'd be like, just go play with the dog. Go, go outside. I don't care. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Unlock the door. Okay. <laughs> Just yeah. stay in the front. Yeah, yeah. I, I, right where just be where I can see you, and that's <laughs> right. it. That's, that, go outside. Don't talk to me no more. Right. Yeah. So, girl, we feel you. Okay. Okay. We that's what I'm at though. <laughs> we making it though. But you know what? I had to occupy my time though. So it's like I know how I am. Like I know. Like I get to a point where I feel like I'm so lonely. Like I'll be like, oh my god, I gotta have somebody. Like I really just need to be in a relationship. 
I hit that vibrator, y'all, and I'm so disgusted. I'm like, I don't even want to deal with nobody. See, this is why I'm glad I'm single because I can just go to sleep. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, I want to I tell. So, <laughs> with guys, sometimes when guys beat up, they be like, fuck am I doing this shit for? Like, you be like, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe I done beat off to this, this nasty yeah. bitch. Oh, I can't, I can't stand this shit. <laughs> Be my you be, you be like, oh, I'm so disgusted. Oh, <laughs> uh, let me clean myself up and go to bed. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be a, it'd be a moment of like, uh, uh. yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, you be put yourself in time out and shit and be like, I can't believe yeah. this shit. Right. So, you know, <laughs> it just depends. I'm good after that, though. So, that, that's because you got the, When I start feeling lonely, I know what's up, though. So, right, right. It's just, it's just hormones bro like we we all get horny you know so you yep. all want to feel that warm body but then there's a whole nother set of there's a whole personality with that dick that you got mm-hmm. to do with you know what i'm yep. saying so that's real nigga shit like i listened to joe rogan podcast and he literally said his dad told him before he make decisions jack off first mm-hmm. and yep. at first i thought the shit was funny then i realized how true it is like mm-hmm. realize how much trouble you could stay out of Exactly. You just exactly. Nut first, like just Cat, get that out your head. Get out the way. Yep. Cat Williams said the same shit. He was like, "Just go ahead, beat your dick off real quick, and then go to make that decision." Because if you over here making this decision based off of your hormones, like if you on this high, you always like, "Listen, I got to get it right here. Yep. It don't matter." But if yep. you like, mm, they're not really worth my time. You know what I'm saying? You can like, pass on it. Yeah. yeah. This bitch got two front gold teeth. I don't. I don't really need to mess with oh, her. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Oh no! Nah. Once she got gold teeth, it's right. Listen, she just don't make good decisions when it comes to dietary things. That's mm-hmm. all. <laughs> uh, but, but I want to throw the ball to Malcolm. I, I saw you had raised your hand, bro. Shout out to Fandoms Anonymous. Hello, people. Uh, excuse me for popping in and out. This mic wasn't working. Is it working now? Can't you hear me? Yes, sir. God damn it. God, I had the damn privacy turned off. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it that the privacy was turned off? I just feel stupid. I was just over here with all these different mics. Hello? 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 None of them was working. It's just been a travesty. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> it's been a real travesty, man. <laughs> Anywho, I was talking to Jerry about this last night, and I guess my abstinence is post-divorce abstinence. So, whole time after I got divorced, I was like, guess I ain't going to be getting none no more. Like, what is this going to be like? I'm just used to it being a ride. What's going to happen? Then I got in a relationship right after I got divorced. And it was like, well, I guess I'm getting some again. <laughs> what is this going to be like? So it was, it was different. It was different. Because I literally had a moment like, I guess this is going to be a long time before I have sex. Because I'm the type of person like, I, I'm important. I just can't give myself to anybody. Because just like the girl was saying earlier, like that stuff transfer. If you've been doing horrible shit out in the streets and then you won't come lay up with me, I'm finna be feeling the horrible shit you've been doing out in the streets. And then next thing you know, I'm chain smoking. And then next thing you know, I'm watching Divorce Court late at night because that spirit then got off on me. Like, <laughs> Not you know, Divorce like, Court? <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> raggedy bitches lay up and watch Divorce Court up at night. <laughs> Come on now. Divorce Court, Law and Order, SVU, and, <laughs> and one of them other shows. Hold on now. <laughs> and Bones. Hey, like Bones. <laughs> hey, look. I know look, all the me, and Olivia, see, me and Olivia sir. Benson have a special relationship, okay? Anywho, you know, I just didn't want to just give it to any old body. Luckily, the person I'm with is worth giving it to. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. But I really thought, like, if I wouldn't have got a relationship, I probably would have still not been getting none. And I would have been fine with that because it just would have been me. My, I just bought a brand new video game tonight. I feel so good about myself. I got a 22-pound box worth of comic books. It just would have been me. You know what I'm saying? We would have been, we'd have just been cooler, you know? F- pull up my favorite BBWs on on um the different on the search. You know, it is what it is. It Tasty is what it is. Pull it up. You know, BBW. It says that. No, I'm telling my browser history now. Let me shut up. But um, anywho, it, it it's <laughs> it's one of them things, man. Where you just you you are worth you a lot. You know what I'm saying? You as a person to yourself, and you don't just give money to anybody. You don't just give every when you got a pack of gum and you don't just give everybody a piece of gum, do you? You you know what I'm saying? You could walk right past somebody that asked for some gum, be like, no, and then your homeboy be like, hey bro, you got some gum. 
you don't just give gum to anybody. You don't, let anybody, you don't let anybody in your house. You don't let anybody in your car. You don't just pull up at a barbershop and let them cut your hair. So, who, so not just know anybody finna touch my dangling. I'm just sorry. It just don't work like that. Uh, it don't work you, like that. Malcolm, you bring up very valid points. But after my <laughs> divorce, I was hoeing it up. Jeremy was watching me in left and right. Jeremy, hey, <laughs> hey, and hey, I was hey, trying let, not to do that. Hey, listen, I was listen. trying not to do that. Mm-mm, you mm-mm. know what I'm saying? I was in. A, I, I was. Man, the drop hit me, bro, and I was just like, "Listen." Jeremy was like, "Listen, bro, go ahead and get it out your system." But uh, yeah, no, man, you bring up very valid points, and I, I and can't I, disagree with any of them. Yeah, but I ain't want to be no hoe. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I sometimes that, you got wasn't trying to get into another um another marriage is what it was. Yeah, you see, better preach, my brother. <laughs> see, but see, you got to have that understanding that this ain't marriage situations right now. Right. You got to have a whole situation where you just like, listen, I'm getting this out of my system. I'm feeling my worth. Uh, I ain't and, like and that. I'm it. vulnerable. I'm telling the truth about myself. I'm vulnerable. <laughs> you we sucking, baby. What you want for dinner? You you. Mm-mm. You want me to mow your grass? <laughs> we in a relationship. No, I just couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't. I oh couldn't do God. that. I'm telling. You, I'm February 28th. I was in the courtroom saying thank you, no thanks. February 29th, I was in Atlanta picking somebody up from the airport. It's a different ball game. You know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> you got it, bro. I switch teams. I'm like LeBron. <laughs> I'm taking my talent somewhere else, and that's what happened. So yeah, excuse me for being late too. I got off work late. You know, it came home with damn mic. This mic won't work, and this mic won't work, and it's just been a bit of a. But yeah, you got you got to be careful, man. You just can't, you just can't just throw your body all over the place, man. It's stuff out here, AIDS, STDs, COVID, Rovid. You know what I'm saying? I'll I'll just type in. Listen, I just made so th- <laughs> See, you missed the part about the gray area between I get it and being a and straight I finna home. believe I would have had to whole stay phase. in the gray area. You I would have had whole you were more on the white the end of the gray area. I was more. I was I was a little bit further down than what you was. I guarantee you. You still didn't go didn't ahead and show. you know vet them. You don't be like, hey, here my dick. You know what I mean? You just don't <laughs> throw it everywhere, but. You just go ahead and say, listen, listen, hey. Well, you know, hey. It definitely sounds like you were definitely throwing it everywhere. Oh, no, 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 that was before I got married. That's, that's <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. He was, out, he was out there throwing the alley hoop. Whoever, whoever throw it now, come on. No, no, I was, um, I was not, I was, uh, I was very, <laughs> and I was very going ahead and, uh, no, I, 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 went, I went throwing it out. No. Was I, Jerry? No. Nope. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, back to what I was saying. <laughs> in a, uh, in a, if anybody know me on here, Lauren know me. Lauren know I'm very selective. Lauren, how many girlfriends did I have in high school? See, she Maybe. took too long to count. <laughs> Maybe one. <laughs> See, um, no, I like video games and TV. I ain't got time to be messing around y'all pissed tail girls. You know what I'm saying? But if you just happen to be that one, then oh well, we're gonna do this thing. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. Even when I got divorced and got in this relationship, Lauren said, You sure? And I was like, I mean, I'm gonna bring it to let you see her. You know what I'm saying? I need to I need to meet her. If you like her, then that mean it's okay. Cause you know, you don't fool. And let's be clear, I didn't like the wife from the moment I even heard her name. See, that you know. I just had to get I had to get her vetted and everything, and she's doing good. It's been, it's been almost a year already. See, it's already been around a whole revolve around the sun. Anyways, um, yeah, don't give your dick to everybody. Don't don't ever let everybody open up the box. Um, don't let everybody play with the cat. You know what I'm saying? If they don't, and I heard the stuff y'all was saying earlier. If they if you don't know how to lick it, just get up, get up, just leave. I'm um, just leave. Go on, leave. You know what I'm saying? You got to know where to go. You know, don't stay in one place. Go in the other places. If the head trash, her ass is grass. I mean, I'm just trying to catch up with everything y'all was talking about. Um, that, that's it. That's all I got to say. I'm mute myself. I'm going to change the color of these lights. All right. <laughs> well, y'all, um, we, we've done a lot. We're knocking on two hours. And uh, this, that is a bitch of a thing to edit. So we're going to wrap this up. So, um, I'm just going to allow, uh, I'm going to shout out a couple people and let y'all plug yourself. Uh, I'm going to go in no particular order. I'm just going to pick people. Um, so Jared, if you don't mind, go ahead and plug your stuff first, bro. How people can follow you and what you got going on. Hey man, find me on Facebook, Jared, like the poet standing. 
or Jared hashtag promising daydreamer. Uh, get at my website www.pdaydreamers.com, and that's that's about that. All right, all right. Appreciate you, brother, for coming out. And uh, right. King, you already know it is. That's my podcast cousin over there, y'all. So, bro, mm-hmm. let him know. Um, appreciate y'all having us on. Uh, my name is uh, King B, aka Sir Rude, not to be confused with the Sir that's on here you can check out um, my podcast i do with my homegirl jay rio controversial chronicles you can find us on facebook you can hit us up on instagram at dcc pod give us a listen anywhere that you listen to podcasts and if you want to find me in particular just uh search oh it's over here yeah 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 it's right there there it is there it is search king b you might find me you might not if you can't find me you wasn't supposed to but if you do find me add me but I'm very, very uh, free about my thoughts. Yeah, because it's outspoken. Uh, <laughs> Chris, oh, yeah, oh, entrepreneur says, come on up here and tell <laughs> folks what you got. Okay, so if you need face masks, you can hit me up. The SD Company, SD for socially distant. Um, if you need hair care products, I do own my own hair care company, shampoo, conditioner, um, edge control, hair growth serum. I got it all. Um, and I also just started my own ebook business. I have over 2,000 ebooks. You can find me at www.d2esdigitaldiva.com. Any books in, in relation to business, finance, Bitcoin, uh, Forex, all that good stuff is on there. Book started at $5.94. Um, but if you want to just um, hit me up to talk, find out some more information about how I got started, you can hit me up at Crystal Nicole on Facebook. And that's K-R-Y-S-T-E-L. That's it. All right, all right. Now I gotta holler at my little sister over here blazing. She turned off her camera, so I'm gonna hit her up for. Hey, girl, go ahead and let them know. You muted, baby. Hey guys. So I'm blazing. You know they go say Eddie back there. Um, my name is Lauren, owner of Mind, Body, and Wellness Nutrition Club. Um, but that's it. I just love y'all, and you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and I think that's it. In my Herbalife site, so go look me up. Hey, 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 hey. Fandom's anonymous in the building. Came into church late, but he here just in time for offering. Come on, bro. I am here uh, with my cup of water. I'm trying to do better in life. Um, you can find me at the, the Fandom's Anonymous, where I do all that good old stuff. Um, still trying to get my studio together. I'm trying to, you know, make it look like something. You know, just recently moved. Um, that's about it, man. That's all I got. Hey, there it is. Oh, and Kim found like a youth pastor. Um, he was like, appreciate y'all for having us. <laughs> <laughs> we from the Greater Beulah Baptist Church. Uh, we um, to speak to your youth again about the Word of God. Oh, bro, that's hilarious. All right, Mr. Stokes, come on, tell everybody about your endeavor that you're working on. Just, just go ahead and spill the beans a little bit. So uh, I'm working on a podcast that will introduce uh, people to different types of animes. A lot of times people think that animes are just about, uh, you know, either big breasted high school teenagers or, you know, Dragon Ball Z or things like that. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually starting a podcast called Anime for Anyone, for Everyone, excuse me. So um, I'll be, you know, just interviewing certain people, talking to them about maybe what maybe is a good anime to get them started on and to, uh, you know, talk to them from there. And and then maybe find other animes that are interesting for you. So that's what I'm doing. Hey, project coming soon. I'm, I'm definitely behind you, brother. E Breezy. Where you at, lady? Come on over here and talk to us. Come and talk to me. I'm here. Hi. So, yeah, my name is E Breezy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can look me up on Facebook, Instagram, all social media as Ebony the Goddess. That's what you're going to get. And that's what you got. Have a good night. All right. So, we started out with goddamn 12 at one point, but uh, we down to seven because niggas got to work tomorrow. <laughs> So to everybody that attended and gave their opinions and thoughts, listen, I love each and every one of you. I appreciate you guys for taking your time out of your night and your sleep schedule to shoot the shit with us. This is our season finale. So it felt only right to reach out to family members and share this moment with y'all. Y'all, we made a whole first season for Squad Goals, yo. 
he will be returning to squad goals in 2021 with season two. It's going to be a little bit of a shakeup. You're going to see some new faces, you know what I'm saying? A new layout, new music, new all of that. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully I would love to see you guys return and check us out for season two. So stay tuned to the podcast uh, website. Well, not website, the Facebook group and Instagram and all that shit. So um, it's the 2020 podcast LLC. Please say the LLC. It's your boy, Sir. Squad goes. Season finale. We out. Yeah.